Welcome to Journeys with Jason George, episode 45, Ralph's Retreat and Animal Sanctuary. This is a place that I actually don't really know much about. So I arranged a trip so that I could learn more about this place than I helped out. And they're known for helping micro pigs or normal pigs, but we'll learn more about that as this story goes on. This place actually has a whole bunch of amazing animals that I didn't even realize were here. This was such a special treat for me. So come and join this journey with me. I've just released a book, so I brought it with me to share. Do you want to read the book out? Okay, yes. Look at that book. It's all about wildlife. It is. It is. Look out. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you like it? You like it? Oh, good boy. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's awesome. With all the pigs on site, this animal was definitely my favorite. But let's learn a little bit more about him later. Buck Obama. Come here. Come here, Box. So this is a teacup pig? So Rocco was sold as a $2,500 teacup pig. And you can clearly see that Rocco is not a teacup pig. <laughs> that does not look very small. No. So it, it is very sad because often um, the teacup pigs are sold as, as piglets that shouldn't even have been weaned yet from, from their mom. And families are disillusioned and it puts the, the pig at risk and their home at risk. And it's also hard for pet owners, right? Who think they're going to be able to care for a pig and then end up not being able to care for a pig. So this is Arnie. So Arnie has, it's okay, he's a bit shy. He has um, severe arthritis in his back end because he was kept in a crate for many years. So his back end didn't develop and was all cramped. So he gets his chiropractic care regularly. And um, what you can see is, um, this is a, a combination of mud and stuff, but mini pig, pot belly pigs are prone to dry skin. So they get um, coconut oil massages twice a week. Oh. A little jealous of that. I watch. I got a massage once yeah, a week. Yeah. So they need. Uh, they only need about a cup of food uh, in the morning and uh, at night. And then we supplement with like vegetables, like oh, okay. fruits, treats, and um, some. Some of them get vitamins. And that we feed uh, a vegan uh, mini pig feed that has all, everything that they need in it. Okay. And so like, why? Like, why do we always think that pigs eat so much? Like, where? Like, do you and know where? You know, if you give them a bunch of food, they would absolutely eat it. <laughs> oh, okay. But they, they, it's important, especially with mini pigs, to control their weight, because if not, they're not designed to be, like, big, <laughs> oh, big meat sows. Um, and their little legs, they can what? get arthritis and have heart conditions, just like people. Oh. Health conditions. So, yes, it's important to, to keep them at a good weight and to maintain the optimal health. Yeah. Hey, buddies. And pigs are actually really clean. That's another misconception about pigs. Hey, that's not nice. They need the mud for, uh, they don't sweat, so they have no sweat glands. Oh. They cool down and they also use it as a natural sun spray. So all of them have pools. Very hard to keep clean. We clean it every day. <laughs> Water is like a full-time job around here. Um, you can litter train them, harness train them. They're, they actually have the intelligence of a three-year-old child. So super smart and super emotional. So um, very sensitive. They like routine. They don't love change. They're very uh, loyal to their, um, to their owners. And they get very depressed. They also need a lot of stimulus because they're so smart. Really? So if they don't, they can get depressed. They can get um, destructive. These guys are all very friendly. Everybody in this pen is under two, so they're going to get bigger. <laughs> these, these guys are Henry and Hatchie. They came from a home, um, so a lot of people don't realize or choose not to realize that there's bylaws preventing you from hunting pigs in, in certain towns. Oh, okay. Don't allow them. Most towns do not. They consider them an exotic pet. So the bylaw will come to your house if you get a call and they say you got 10 days to find them. Usually they're pretty good at working with you if they know that you're trying to find some place for them. If not, they'll seize your pig. So these guys are, they came from Bylaw and their their family's still involved. And then these little guys, so this is 
They all look again, similar. Yeah, again means snowshoes in the indigenous language. I wish I knew which one, but I'm not sure. Okay. Um, and they were actually born at the sanctuary. They came from a sanctuary that was um, closing down for unfortunate reasons. Okay. And um, they were allowed to breed at six months, which is not good. They should be a minimum of 18 months to breed. Oh. Um, So unfortunately, that they start um, not producing as much when they become under three. So they were gonna be cold. Um, so they, they were rescued and they came here, and they're lovely girls. They're just starting to get used to it. So. Do you? I think there might be one egg in there on the other side. <laughs> oh, there is. <laughs> Because of the change and yeah. the stress, they've gotten a few eggs since they've been here, but not too many. <laughs> What's his story? So Winston and his brother Max were actually found running around the streets of Toronto many years ago. So they were brought to the sanctuary and they've been here ever since. Anybody? Huh. Oh, someone just poked me in the butt. <laughs> Oh. I love Ellie Who's this one? <laughs> this is Eleanor. Hello. She's actually, so Eleanor turned a year in April, and uh, she's actually one of my original people here. Hi, Eleanor. <laughs> you just poked me in the bum. He's very curious. So these are our summer students, Naomi and Chantel. They're doing awesome work. It's Sorry, ladies, you're going to be famous now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so pigs typically live about until the age of 15. Um, oh. But uh, he's surpassed that. And he, first of all, was raised uh, in an apartment for meat. And then his, um, his owner's daughter convinced him to bring him to the sanctuary. So That's he, nice of her. Yeah. He's, he's, you want some treats first? Come here, buddy. Come so back. why is he behind, like, a... So, Percival doesn't like other cookies. Oh. And he prefers to have his bachelor pad. Nice. And there's certain, certain people that, that he appreciates more than others. When he first got here, he was one of the most aggressive pigs that has ever been to the sanctuary. So they would, like, put his feet in and run out. But I'm just sorry, buddy. <laughs> He is a, a very sweet boy now. So pigs can become what they call fat blind or mechanically blind. And that, that's when they become really obese that the wrinkles go over their eyes so they can't see. And although he's lost a significant amount of weight, his vision is, is still impaired by his wrinkles because it, you'd have to have a surgery. Oh. Like a plastic surgery they open up. Yeah, it's great. Jeez. To, have to fix that. Winston. How many pigs do you have? We have about 50. 50 pigs. 50 pigs right now. Yeah. And then we have alpacas and horses. And how do you like make like how do you raise funds to like take care of all of these animals? So we are registered not for profit, so all our funds come strictly from donations and fundraising. So that's sort of like how we met then. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Please don't put this in a <laughs> Well, I want to see how you. I wanted to see if you make this look easy. Oh gosh, like don't make it look easy. Come here, Char. Come here, babe. <laughs> that that was way quicker than I was expecting. <laughs> if I tried that, I would. Come here, Charlie. So little Charlie. <laughs> little Charlie was found in the sh running around the streets of Bradford. And he was, hey, <laughs> Winston. <laughs> oh, hi, 
Penelope's. This is Penelope. <laughs> Hello, Penelope. <laughs> So that's like that's Alice, right? Alice the rooster. Yes. <laughs> Little Charlie was found running around the streets of Bradford. Mm -hmm. and, um, a family was able to catch him, and they said that he was a piglet um, with his uh, umbilical cord still attached. But actually, he was about nine to twelve months and just completely emaciated with a prolapsed penis. So we didn't think he would survive the night. He also had a condition called mange, which is mite. Yeah, and yeah. It was so severe, it took about three months to clear up. Um, so he was in isolation for three months. But he's doing incredible now. He's the most loving little piggy. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, because he was so small, um, and it was during a criti critical growth period, he um, his growth is likely stunted, which means his organs are probably stunted as well. So it might shorten his lifespan. Oh. So he's doing very well right now. <laughs> are you going to give us one for the camera there, Alan? Al? Al? What do you got to say, Al? You have something to say? Al? <laughs> Alice is a very popular attraction here. <laughs> and um, she was actually confined to a laundry room for a very long period of time. And she was in a, she was in pretty rough shape when she got here. Her hooves needed to be done. She had no hair. She had a skin condition and um, the her back muscles weren't developed. So she was having trouble walking and she had a limp in her right arm. But now Penelope looks so happy. She's very happy. And uh, so now she's building up her muscles. She gets regular chiropractic care. Um, so that has certainly helped. And when she got here too, she was she was very angry. I actually couldn't get near her for several months. And now she's my girl, eh? You're going to give a belly rub? Give her belly rub? Down for a belly rub? So what made you get into like the sanctuary like business slash? So I actually, we had our, a few of our own animals and um, we heard that the sanctuary was closing. So we reached out to um, the sanctuary and we offered to take one pig. <laughs> we ended up with the sanctuary. So unfortunately the, um, the individual that started the sanctuary, Carborough, it was in existence for over 18 years. Um, she was having uh, medical issues and needed to sell the farm. Yeah, yeah. And so I worked with her, and we're still working together today. She's she's doing well, and so she is still very much a part of Ralphie's. And uh, together we have continued to to help the animals. So yeah, it's the best thing I've ever done. Cool. Why like why pigs? Like why the like? <laughs> it seems like the focus is on pig, especially based on like the back of your shirt. People ask me that all the time. Why pigs are, for me, it's um, when you come and spend a day with us, you'll figure out why pigs. They're, they have so much personality. Um, they're incredible animals and, and very misunderstood animals. Uh, and also, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of people that can take in pigs. It's not like cats or dogs. Um, when they need a home, it's it's hard to, to find homes for them. So it is an animal that does need um, rescuing and special care. So. Even even veterinary, uh, there's very few veterinarians that will uh, service pigs. Really? Yeah. Yeah, huh. They don't get a lot of training on pigs in school, and so most vets don't know a whole lot about pigs. Even to find a farrier, oh, there we go, babes. Even to find a farrier to do their hooves, our farriers come from hours away. Huh. Because there's very few of them that will, that will do it. A very misunderstood animal, unfortunately, but a very, very cool animal. Well, this one looks really violent right here. 
But if you'd have seen her a few months ago. <laughs> now she's a princess. Yeah, hey buds. You're already falling asleep? <laughs> So this is Little Chip, yeah. and Little Chip is very small for his age, and he is um, actually what people hope to, to have when they get a pig. Uh, there's myths out there, micro pigs and um, teacup pigs, that the pigs will stay very small, um, but that is that is a myth. It's very rare to find a pig under 40 pounds, um, even like 60 pounds. They, they grow large. They grow like this, and then um, people don't want them. So it's a, it's a huge misconception and we try to educate people around that. We, we ask people to come to the sanctuary if they're thinking about getting a pig and learning about pig behaviors, that sort of thing. But he's, uh, like I say, it's a, that's an unusual case for him to be that little, but completely healthy. Just and you're saying that that little one eats the same as those like big yep. ones, right? Yep. That's crazy. Yep. So this is Tori, Notorious Pig. <laughs> oh, what up? Notorious P.I.G. Oh, you guys show your tea yeah. So he is, um, <laughs> he's our only boar on the property. And um, the reason for that is that we have been unable to fully neuter him because um, previous owners tried to crush his testicles. Ow. To neuter him. And there was, the damage was so extensive, our vet was only able to release one or remove one. So he still has boar hormones. We believe that he's infertile, but he still has boar hormones. And you can see his tusks. All the, all the male pigs grow tusks. And so we get those trimmed when, as needed. Hey, Tori. <laughs> And this is Samson. We call him Barracuda because he likes to chomp his jaws. Yeah, Samson. So these, I'm assuming, are Indian running ducks. They are. I believe that Sweet Pea, the bigger one, is a cross. He's a little different than the others, but the other three are definitely Indian runners. They're my favorite of the ducks. They're amazing. Call them the Duckersons. That's Mabel. Ah! So this group is, um, that's Max, that's Winston's brother that was found wandering around, running around the street in the city. And there's Big Pumba at the back there. Hi, Daryl. Hi. So, yes. Yeah. So, this is Daryl. He's an alpaca. A lot of people ask us the difference between alpacas and llamas. So, alpacas are smaller and they're actually prey animals, whereas llamas are, are larger and are guard animals. Their fibers used to make, um, to make hats and mitts, scarves, that sort of thing. It has a natural water resistant property. And then their poop is actually uh, really high in nitrogen. So it's great for gardens. Oh, you okay. have to compost it, you can just throw it in the garden. Huh. So these guys got sheared and we're actually going to be making Daryl's apparel, aren't we? Yes, yes. And Daryl has a, an obsession with peaches. He loves his peaches. <laughs> hmm. Yes, there's more peach coming, honey. More peach coming. There you go. They actually have no top teeth, just bottom teeth. Oh, you love your peaches, bud. <laughs> Give me a peach. Yeah, there's more here. Come on, more peach. Mommy says no more peaches, hon. No more peaches. I know it's gone. No, no more peaches. No more peaches. So who are these two? Yeah. Boston and Latte? Yeah.
Boston. And Boston had um, you, a condition called uveitis. So he had his first eye removed. Oh and, my gosh. And then a year later, he needed to have the second eye removed. So although he's completely blind, he does incredibly well. And most people don't even realize that he's blind until they get close to him. He comes when he called, he finds his food, he finds his water. He's, he's a, a, an incredible example of resilience. Hey. He has a big heart. Yeah, you're okay, bud. Hey. And it, this is Boston? Boston, yep, he's 13. And then this is Latte. So Latte is 16 and he's a miniature pony, a miniature horse. And uh, he has one eye. He had he came here blind in one eye and then over the course of the years I started bothering him. So he we just hit recently had his eye removed. And why you had the horses here and I was like I didn't notice it and then they like as soon as we walked up to them I was like I noticed something yeah. I was like different. Hey buddy. Hey, yeah. You're beautiful. Wow, that's so crazy. I'm... Hey. It's okay. Yeah, I'm scared. <laughs> it's okay. He's a gentle soul. Okay. Do you have treats? I don't have treats. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. He likes to, he might pull your, your, your strings on your pants there. Uh-oh. <laughs> he might pants you. No. <laughs> he, love, he loves zippers and strings and knee buds. But he's a, a spectacular example of resilience in animals. Does, does he ever like run around in the... Yep. Yeah? Yeah. So he, he can run around in the big field. He'll find, like if he'll be over there... I'll call him and he'll run to me, he'll find me. They have incredible, you know, that their other uh, senses. senses are enhanced, so his, his hearing is incredible. That's him. And the fencing makes like a ticking sound. Oh, okay. You can hear the electric fence and yeah, he finds his water. So, like, you make sure then to like keep it in the same. Ow, ow, ow. Sounds like a Justin Bieber song there. How, tastes how like peaches. Your finger back tastes like nope. peaches. <laughs> okay, so this is Valentino, yeah. Valentino, Valentino we call him TT. Okay. I don't know who came up with it, but he responds to it. And uh, I know, I know. He's very snuggly. Okay. And then Hartley over here, she's a little bit more shy. She was actually uh, named after the heart on her forehead, and then also there's. A pig here who unfortunately passed away in the winter, um, whose name was Harley, who was also black and white. Oh, okay. So together they... Yeah. So, um, I think there were 11 months. Harley came in. She was near death. Um, and uh, she's been doing quite well. Um, and they were they were together. There was a whole bunch of cats, I'm pretty sure. And, but, yes, I know. You're very snuggly. Right now, we're working on um, cow cuddling with them. Oh, so, and what's that? So whenever they are laying down, we always just like hop right in and we just lay down beside them. And it's like a huge stress reliever. Honestly, it's the best thing ever. It's so great. But TT's been really good at it. Hartley's been... Not so good. She's, she's okay. She's getting better. Maddie, who was the other summer student we just ended on Friday, she had been working really, really hard with them. Okay. And now they're... This is our mother and son right here, Winnie. Yeah. So one, one is the, his mother, and Franklin is her son. Ooh. And this is Hattie Ray. She's our first ever sheep. We just got her. She's super sweet. When did you get her? Um, maybe two, three weeks ago. She's um. We were asking if we could shear her because it's it's hot outside, but 
the vet has advised us to not shear her just because they don't think it's going to grow back in time for in, in time for winter. So we just take her outside in the morning, and then when it gets hot, we'll bring her inside. Yeah, okay. Here we have Jojo, Josephine. So he doesn't love men. Hi. So we give him a, a one leg, a, a one leg distance. <laughs> I will keep a one leg distance. Yes. And now it says one leg distance. So. Beautiful bird, yes, though. Yes, she is. <laughs> so. <woo! laughs> That's right, you did it, you got it. So you can see his waddles are red. When he's relaxed, they'll turn blue, like his head. And you can see the carnicles on top of his head are starting to turn red. And they say the more carnicles, the more testosterone they have. <laughs> and the long piece in, fr in front of his face that's called a snoot and that actually goes back up um, and apparently they say the longer the snoot the bigger the snoot the more attractive they are to the females so our, our Fernando he's, he's unfortunately just average of an average snoot, eh, buddy? I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> Not everybody can be above average. That's right. Well, I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry for <laughs> talking about your snoot like that. There you go. You figured it out. You figured Fernando out. So he's guarding. He's like our guard turkey. He guards the girls. Oh. And then he guards his property. And he has a particular disdain for men. So it, I don't know if they smell the testosterone or what, but hi, buds. <laughs> hmm? You're a nice boy. Hi, buddy. So you can hear the poofing? Yes. That's actually his mouth making that noise. And so he's trying to get bigger and show you that he's in charge. No, you win. You win. So you'll notice on some of their ears that there will be a little notch or they might even have part of their ear missing. So pigs have a very strong hierarchy and they need to figure out who's who's boss. So the fighting can be quite intense and they usually grab for ears. Oh. So, um, yes, often you'll see little, little like bites out of their ears. And the only way for them to figure out the hierarchy is to let them let them fight. We do try to stop it sometimes if it's getting really bad, but um, but it has to happen. It has to happen for them to figure it out. So who is top who is pig? Top dog? Who is top it, dog here? I know who it's not top. top to, it's, it's not top dog. It's, it's got to be top pig, pig right? Top pig. <laughs> Emmett thinks he is. Emmett thinks he is, but I don't. Yeah. So which one's Emmett? Have we... So Emmett is. Uh, we'll find Emmett. He's usually around. He's around here. He here might, yeah, we'll find. Is he back in the pen? Um, so who is actually top pig? I feel like if Samson was like, what's yeah, <laughs> Samson would be out. these two guys in here. Yeah, or you know what? Who really is? Spike. Yeah. Spike? Yeah, I actually... I, I was... Spike. Yeah, so we have a pig that's 19 years old. And he, he like, um, Percival has his own pen because he will scrap anybody. And he's oh, okay. 19, but he's still... <laughs> Don't mess with Spike. <laughs> she is uh, not top pig. <laughs> She's the most docile piggy. She won't fight with anybody. And you can talk to her. Hey buddy, you're not a micro pig. <laughs> I know, it's sorry. You're much bigger than that, eh? It's okay. Yeah. You can go back to drinking. I wasn't trying to disturb you. Oh, he's going down for a belly rub. <laughs> Does that mean they are enjoying themselves yep, then? Yeah, absolutely. They... Yep, they're feeling comfortable and safe. And... But we are actually in the process of um, applying for grants 
to have one of our barns insulated and heated yeah. so oh. that you know the yeah. pigs like Ernie yeah. um, who have the arthritis and the older pigs um, actually have not just yeah. like their heat but have it yeah. being heated yeah yeah and we often get uh, we often get calls to take in uh, pigs in the in the winter but they've they've been in the um, they've been inside pigs so we can't put an inside pig outside because their the hair and uh, has changed skin has not had time to adapt until next time, stay safe, have fun, and enjoy the wildlife. Feel free to comment, post, share, subscribe, and purchase your own copy.